The following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. We are back. Insight Pitch with Skip Lockwood. Skip, I'm Ralph Tycho, Comfortably Zoned. You know that. And you're <laughs> Comfortably Zoned, too. How are you? I haven't been with you for a week or so. I apologize. I hope you're well. Two weeks. Well, you know, we're going to let the punishment fit the crime on this one. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> but I did miss you. Um, how you feeling, first of all? I hope you're doing well. I've been, I've been good. We have, I've got uh, seasonal allergies, and this is the time of the year before it really gets cold. And I suffer a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm doing sorry fine. i that. I'm doing fine. But it's, everything's changing back here. We've got a storm coming up the coast, and the leaves are blowing around, and it's getting chilly, and one of the things that happens here. It happens quickly, too, because I remember a couple of weeks ago you were still experiencing nice weather. You had about an Indian summer that you may have been going through. We did. We had a hot spell. And uh, yeah. that is gone. It's not hot anymore. Well, um, change is something we all live through. <laughs> Yeah. And here's a change. You're in the World Series, and it's uh, you're not coming from behind. Uh, playoff situation, you're two games up with the Boston Red Sox. Um, some of your thoughts on, on uh, the series, on baseball, on whatever, whatever hits you that you want to talk about. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't follow baseball in general uh, all that closely. It's a long season and I think you go crazy if you if you watch, you know, the, every game and, and every inning. And uh, Certainly the Red Sox had a good ride this year. L.A. started off poorly but came back. So each of the two teams has had, you know, big, huge success. Um, but I, I think there's a, a difference between uh, these two teams, and um, I don't believe it's a, a clash necessarily, but I think there are, are, are big differences between the, the, the towns, between the teams, uh, between the ballpark, uh, between the owners. Uh, I think that these two teams are – are, are are different in, in many, many different ways. I was thinking about it today before we were going to talk, and I don't know how, how deeply you want to go into it, but, you know, the, if you lined up these two teams uh, side by side, you know, starting from the top and, and working your way down, uh, you know, the differences between the owners group are, are such a vastly different uh, set of circumstances. You know, John Henry that, that owns the, the Red Sox and, you know, Magic and, and his group that, that owns the Dodgers and what they, what they represent, at least, and how they got their money and <clears throat> uh, how, they going about, how they go about putting a team on the field, <clears throat> it's, it's very different. Um, as you know, John Henry owns the Globe, also in a soccer team in um, in England, and he also owns a racing car company, Roush Racing Car Company, Roush a Racing Car Company. Um, when I was just thinking about the the way that these two teams match up, and if you look at the the pitching staff, you know what. Kershaw on one side, and we've got we've got guys on, pitching over here that <clears throat> are not making you know Kershaw's money, you know by any stretch. Uh, well, the price. one person that you have that is most interesting to me and is making pretty good money is David Price, and he yeah. his World Series uh, appearance. Uh, was interesting because he had been struggling in postseason games for a long time now, and um, 
that was nice to see. Can you speak to him? Because uh, as a former pitcher, um, you, I'm sure you could appreciate the ups and downs of, of his career. Yeah, I, he was in the minor leagues <clears throat> earlier this year. He was having troubles coming back from, <clears throat> I believe it was a shoulder inflammation. <clears throat> Probably he went to the minor leagues. And when he he wanted to come back, he wasn't pitching that well at Triple A. And he was determined to come back. You know, when a guy's making that kind of money, you listen to him. And if he wants to come back, he comes back. And the first game back, if if you ever wanted to watch somebody pitch with a sore arm, you, you would have watched David Price. He He was stiff and he was laboring, his pitches were up when they shouldn't have been, down when they should have been up. He was struggling for a release point, trying to find home plate. He just didn't look comfortable. His ball didn't have the life to it, and he he worked hard. Uh, He had some pretty good games towards the end of the season, but in the playoffs, it seems like he's, he's on a mission. You know, uh, he, he's got life to his fastball. He's able to, to put it where he wants. He's throwing his curveball for strikes. Um, I know for a fact when when that release point feels so good in, in, in your hand and when you're coming off and you can, you can feel it, you know, be a strike before it ever leaves your hand and you know what the ball's going to do, uh, it's, it's a nice feeling to go out to the mound and know that that pitch you're going to throw. I used to believe that the ball thrown Ralph would react like a buggy whip. You know, if you threw the whip out, it would. It, you could see it, here it comes, but it snaps, you know, at the plate. It snaps over home plate. And that was a, a visual that I always had when I was pitching. And I see it in Price. And I think Price has found that little bit of snap that comes at the at the end of the pitch. Uh, and, and he's pitched well. I mean, they don't let him go deep in the game. You know, if you can get the club to the fifth or sixth inning, that's the strength of the bullpen. Is, is oh, right. Is, and what a specialized it. game it, it's become. Yeah. So, I think a lot of the Can game... I ask you about, about the weather factor? I don't think when you pitched, uh, I could be wrong, I don't think they were... Uh, playing postseason ball into November, am I correct? Well, I was always on vacation in October, so um, I never, <laughs> never okay. got a chance to play. Um, uh, okay. No, I, um, I think it was over. It's a longer series because they play a qualification, and the yeah, league but... has qualification, and the whole thing just takes longer. I'm, I'm wondering. I know baseball was not made to be played in the snow and in cold weather. Just what you said about uh, he was stiff, warming up, this, that, and the other thing. Is it a good idea to, I mean, is this not, uh, not counterproductive to uh, high, watching high-quality ball when the weather becomes a factor? Well, certainly the first game of the World Series was pretty cold, rainy, and windy here. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's definitely a factor because of the contrast in the two, the two towns. You know, L.A. is going to be in the 80s, 70s, I guess, today, high right. 70s. And in Boston, we're expecting a nor'easter tomorrow. So we've got a storm coming up the coast that might bring snow. It's been cold and blustery and windy here. Um, it's, it's a big contrast. You know, if they so have now to you're going to L.A. Washington. You could avoid that by winning a couple and not coming back. Well, I think they'd like to come back. Uh, if if the team wins a couple out there, of course they they win the whole thing. But Boston uh, Boston would be a great place to win it if you could do it. I've been I've been lucky enough to see several the last two anyway uh, World Series games that that were won in Boston and. Uh, it's a magical place. Uh, I, I said to my friends, "This is I believe in magic, as you know, and I believe in this case in the magic not named Johnston. 
I believe it's Boston's magic is coming uh, this week. Okay. Well, you know, like they, um, there's got to be some magic where Dave Roberts, whose stolen base was so important to the Red Sox just a few years ago, comes back to manage Boston or manage the Dodgers against Boston, whose team is playing a different brand of ball than we're seeing over the last couple of years in, um, you know, it's not just home runs and strikeouts. These guys move the ball over, uh, move players over, hit to, hit to the right side, bunt, hit and run. That's what makes it exciting, and there's some sort yeah. of an irony that Dave Roberts has to manage against that. I don't know. I think, I think he and Alex Cora were roommates at, at one point. I don't know whether it was oh, really? college or – yeah, I think they were roommates. You know, these are two diversity managers. I think it's it makes a big statement for our game to to have the amount of diversity that we have in it. Um, all players from all nationalities playing all different countries. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of of the diversity we have in in the leagues today. Uh, it's it's I think a benefit uh, everybody, especially those people that. That, that watch the, the games closely, as, as we both do. Hey, and if I think that there's going to be world, if I have any reason to believe that we could have world peace, uh, baseball, sports in particular, I go back to uh, the 36 Olympics and, and what have you, it could uh, bring us together as a, as a world, let alone a, a country. Well, I, I believe that baseball is uh, is a national is our national sport, a national game. But I I think there's many many countries watching us and how we uh, comport ourselves uh, during these times. Um, an awful lot of terrible news. If you turn the TV on, you can't find a station that that doesn't have bad news on it. And as we talked about this before. You know, thank God for baseball. You know, at least, you know, a couple of times a week you can find a game on the, the TV that, that makes some sense and um, and it's fun to watch. And and you can get into it. You can even let your kids, my grandsons, watch the game with me. And, and of course, they, they are very concerned about how much cars and beer commercial there are. But uh, they do. They watch it. They they watch it like like you'd watch a symphony, you know that that catch that Ben Attendee made uh, the other oh, day in the outfield. Was that a catch um, or what? They had that side by side with a ballet dancer today in the Globe. Um, it's magical to see stuff like that happen at the ballpark. And I, I the other sports have 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 those things happening too, but I just I see it more in baseball than I do in some of the other sports. Skip, you you played winter ball, am yeah, I correct? I sure did. And, my um, was, if my memory was. serves, you went to Puerto Rico. Yeah, I did. What is that like? Is, it, was it overall a fun experience? I mean, I know life doesn't always have to be fun, but it really does in some ways. Um, was it fun for you? Um. It's a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I was 1970. Um, it was it was it was good to go down there. I hurt myself when I was down there. I was trying to learn a breaking ball. I was throwing it too hard, and I hurt my elbow and had to come home. Um, I took my I took a, a a woman with me that I had just married down there. Um, you met her the other day. And, I did indeed. Uh, she uh, it was uh, uh, an eye-opening experience for the for the both of us. I think it's important to experience other cultures and try to assimilate into the culture when you're when you're down there. I 
there was only seven seven Americans on each team. So the rest of the team was made up of, of Puerto Ricans and uh, Dominicans, but mostly Puerto Ricans. And for them, <coughs> this was a big holiday because you know most of them were playing either in the in the low minor, in the middle minor leagues or high minor leagues. Some few big league ball players, but not a lot, were down there. And this was their home, and this is where they lived, and it was it was going back home for them. Uh, mm -hmm. For for me, I went to Mayaguez, and we we stayed at the Hotel La Palma, which was the only hotel in town, um, and it was um, it was run down. This was was looked like the 1950s version of it, 60s version of what a building would look like. It was, you know, there was one guy sleeping at the desk who checked us in and um, an elevator that was banging on the walls going up. Uh, it was it was a different life. The, uh, the thing I noticed about winter ball was that the fans were ardent about the game and they would bet on situations. So you as a pitcher, they would bet the count and they would bet that a batter wasn't going to get a hit, or you might strike out somebody. And they were they were very into the game that way. I don't know how much was better or was lost, but there was certainly some money exchanging hands while you were out there on the field. It was funny. But the, the people in the towns down there are very into baseball. Winter baseball is big. Or maybe it still is, but when I was down there, this was a big deal for my Grand Puerto Rico to have these players come and stay there and play there. It was uh, a culture that, that I had never experienced before. On the field, was, is there or was there a big difference in the play of the game, if you will? Um, just um, the strategy, what would... Was that much different than the United States? It was. Um, I think it was a hitters. It was a hitters game down there, not a pitchers game. It was a smaller strike zone. Um, oh, okay. balls That's... were not necessarily called strikes. And, you know, they were looking for the the big bats. They were looking for the home runs. Uh, and the, the home runs were named after the principal sponsor of the team. So if if you got a home run, they would scream out, you know, it's a it's an El Senor, or, you know, something like that, because that was the the principal sponsor of the team, huh. and it was and you really couldn't follow it that well. I <clears throat> finally got the gist of it that they were they were naming the sponsors, but. Uh, on the field, I think baseball is pretty uniform, even in different countries. Uh, the field's, of course, not manicured that well. It was kind of a double-A ballpark. Uh, the stands were very close, so there was, you know, with no foul balls that'd be caught, they're all landed in the stands. Uh, that's another big difference between Fenway Park and, and, the, and Chavez Ravine, by the way, is the, the bigness of the field, the foul ground. Is, is way different. It plays a big. Uh, it will play a difference in the in the game. I bet you, in one of these games. Skip, how about how about the coaching? Is, is there any of that, or uh, are there American coaches that um, go with you? Or yeah, uh, the American coach that the manager of the team for my team was Cal Ermer. And he was a coach with the Milwaukee. And uh, it, towards the end of the season, he asked me if I'd play winter ball for him. He had uh, seven picks, and uh, five of them were going to be Milwaukee players. He had two others that he, would, he had asked. And, of course, as a rookie coming up first year, wasn't a very good year for me. I think I was had a losing record. Um, I had to say yes, of course. I, of course I'll play. I want to play. Um, right. And it's Bucks, too. And it's what? It's bucks, you know, dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a few. I think we got paid 
twelve hundred dollars or or I think it was twelve hundred dollars a month, but the hotel came out of it automatically. So I think net in my pocket I was probably making seven hundred dollars a month, something like that. So it wasn't it wasn't big dollars by any chance. So we didn't Right. We bought food. But even that. back then, um uh, it's a lot more money today than it was back then. Oh yeah. I mean seven I don't know what they pay now. I I think they probably pay more. No, but I mean money is worth a lot more now or oh, yeah. you know. They have to pay more because uh, of inflation and whatever. But point being, not bad to be paid to play ball. And um, you guys weren't making an awful lot in the 70s um, here, so anything that supplemented, supplements it had to be good. Well, I felt like I was staying in shape. I felt like it was... It was being paid to work out. I, I really desperately needed a break and pitch to throw for a strike. I didn't, my curveball was um, indifferent at times. I didn't have a good spin on it. Uh, finger pressure uh, was not um, consistent game to game. I went down there as a starting pitcher to, to try to learn, you know, a consistent breaking pitch so that I could, I could throw late in the count or behind in the count. And you could throw up a strike. Uh, in doing so, I, I made my arm very sore because I was trying to, I guess you and I know each other pretty well, I was trying to force it. I was trying to throw it hard. You know, I was trying to make it spin and and all of that. And you can't. You've got to just let it happen. You've got to get the, the finger position right. But the team itself was a, a very close-knit group. So I got to to know the other Americans very well because we all stayed at the same place and um, I got to know the other players and and generally it's a beautiful Did you speak Spanish place. before you left? Before you went? <clears throat> no, no. I didn't even speak American. I was a Boston boy. Born and raised. Uh, well, as a New Yorker, I would go, that's for I sure. <laughs> but you learn it. You know, you pick up nouns and it's, it's all the bad stuff. You know, it's not anything you can repeat to anybody. But uh, it it was a beautiful language. The uh, the island was full of uh, just beautiful places and places to go. And uh, Bill Lee was was a down there with with his his wife, and he and I bought a car together and a little oh, really? wagon. Yeah, and uh, we drove that around. Um, it had a valid license plate. Which is very unusual in in Puerto Rico. Uh, my quest specifically to have a you know a valid license plate that uh, was current and it was it had so it had to be guarded. So we actually had a a street guy guy that lived uh, on the street um, living in our car at night uh, to protect it and. Uh, he, uh, I don't know how it is that Bill negotiated with this guy to have him sleep in our car. But, in a uh, Volkswagen yet. Well, in a Volkswagen. And, uh, <laughs> it had a certain it had a certain aroma to it in the morning when you'd go out. Uh, I can imagine. Sold it. Yeah. Bill went home early. Um, I sold that car for the, what I paid for it. And I st- nice. I think I still owe Bill money for that. I have to call him and see. Okay. Um, if you had him on, we could, we could decide that. I think he'd be a, a terrific guest. I you asked me that before. I would I would like to have him on. I will I will text him tonight and see if he can join me sometime next week. Uh, yeah. If he's, he might be at Fenway too. I'm not sure that he goes in there, but Bill is uh, and, is nothing if he's not colorful. He will have. Uh, no question. And um, okay. my time is very flexible, so don't worry. You know, any time that's good for both of you it would be good for me 24-7. I will. Uh, I'll try to get them on. No promises, but I'll try to get them on. All right. That sounds great. And also, your uh, lovely spouse 
is uh, charming, and I'd like her to return every now and again. And um, we got this thing going. It's nice. I enjoy. Most of all, I, I appreciate I it. We're enjoy chatting. You are so mellow and uh, so together. I enjoy chatting with you. Well, well, thank you. But, uh, I I enjoy remembering what happened back in these years, and and you always surprise me with with questions. And I think there, it's best if you if you just wing it. And 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 I have a have those questions, and I can answer them without having to prepare anything or. Or it's just a oh, absolutely. Spontaneity is like great. If it comes, yeah. it, my thing is I'm curious about stuff. And um, I just like to put my – to walk a mile in your moccasins, so to speak, just to, to get an idea. Because um, you've lived a, an interesting, colorful life yourself. I mean – Skip Black would close her the Mets, for Christ's sake. It's not like you were doing this in uh, Podunk. So, um... A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Hey, we'll do it again next week with or without Thank you, Ralph. Bill Good Bean. We will. Space... Space Amazing. Man. Just, just stay well in the meantime. How about that? I will try. I'll do That's my very can. best. I got my flu shot today. Have you got your flu shot? I got mine today. No, I haven't. I, I haven't, but um, I may do that. <laughs> I won't promise sticking a needle in my arm, but um, I'll uh, see. Don't be a baby. Don't get your flu shot. All right, I will. Thank you, All sir. Right. How Thank about you. that? Better answer? Better answer. All right. Be well. Okay. Thank you. Take Thanks. Be well yourself. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm blessed to speak with Skip Lockwood. I'm Ralph Tycho, Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. The show is Insight Pitch. Go out and buy his book, My Life is a Major League Closer, with a forward by Fergie Jenkins, Hall of Famer. How bad is that? Thanks for listening, everybody. Adios. Good night, Ralph. The proceeding was a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you for listening.